What's going on everybody? This is PH Darian. I'm going to get right into the video. You saw the thumbnail, you saw the title, you clicked, you were interested, or you had something to say. I don't know everything about the topic I'm about to talk on, but I know enough to talk on it. Um, it's going to be 80% lower. So for those of you guys that are wondering, what is an 80% lower? Well, it is just a name given to an, a frame of a receiver for AR-10s, AR-9s, AR-15s, uh, handguns, Glocks, SIGs, stuff like that. Anything that you can take, put in a jig, and finish the receiver or the serialized lump number of a firearm. I have before me now two different 80% lowers. They are both the same, same company, same price. I bought them during the same order. And I will just show you the slight difference and some questions I've been getting at work and from friends of mine posting stuff on social media that's actually been pissing me off lately. Uh, but let's get into this right here. So before me now is a Davidson Defense, which a lot of companies we know manufacture the same exact part and just sell them to somebody else. And then they put their whatever name defense, PH Darien Defense lower or something like that. So this is a very, very close to a mil spec lower as far as parts, um, the way it looks, right? Um, if you could look right here in the front, there it is. Very, very smooth finish. I love the anodizing on this. Same thing on the left side of it as well. You can see the little marks. I hope that's in focus right now. Seems to be. You can see the safe, fire, and auto uh, pictogram on the side. It is machine engraved, not laser engraved. Integrated trigger guard. It is a very, very well put together lower from the 80% factor, which is, it's already done. This part of the trigger shelf is actually already pre previously milled out for you up there. I had videos of me doing 80% lowers. It started to take off. Nobody watched it. Then everybody and their mother started watching it. YouTube started watching it. And then they were just like, nope, and took it down. So didn't stop me from still having them. I can still talk about them. I can still show them. I can't show the process of doing it because therefore I am showing people how to manufacture and or make firearms. It's one thing to show you how to do it. It's another thing to give it to you. And that's what I want to talk about. So I have a lot of friends at work who will go out and buy 80% lowers because they heard something on TV. They watched a YouTube video and they absolutely have no damn clue what that actually means. They think everything's being banned. And while I understand some of their scares, that doesn't mean go out and buy crap. You don't know what you're buying it for. People are buying stuff just to buy it. Like I don't even, ha I have four children, none of which are babies but I'm not going out buying baby formula. Nope. Just to say, oh, in case I need it, you never know, I might just need this one day. Unless I'm bartering with this, I don't need baby formula, so therefore I will, I will leave it to those who need it. I'm not saying you don't need a gun. You can go buy a stripped lower, which is gonna look just like this. It will be previously drilled for your hammer, your takedown, uh, not your takedown pin, your hammer, your trigger, whole trigger pocket is gonna be done. It will be serialized, it will have the uh, city and state engraved on the side and they will charge you the excise tax. They will charge you the dealer's record of sale, the dross. They will charge you taxes and that's fine. And you will walk out the store with it if you live in a free state. Right now, I want to show you a complete 80% lower, which is 100% functional at this point. I did this maybe a month or two ago. I was bored. And uh, this is the exact same one as what I just showed you. I just finished it. So you can see the different areas that were drilled out. Um, if you needed a side-by-side -side type comparison, you will be able to see um, what's drilled and what's not for the obvious. For some of us, it's gonna be painstakingly obvious. And for the rest of us, it may not be so obvious. So there it is. Hopefully that's in focus. Well, the questions I get at work a lot are, hey, I just bought a couple 80% lowers. Are you able to drill them out for me? Nope. I'll pay you for it. Nope. Well, I don't know where to get the jig from. Mm. Well, if you don't know where you're doing, uh, what you're doing when you purchase that, why did you purchase it? I feel like that's a really stupid, idiotic response. I got smart on 80% lowers back in California and I understood if I make one of these for my own personal use, 
I cannot sell it to somebody because I did not go uh, do a background check on them. I know that. I do not have an FFL. I do not have the red tape uh, with the government looking at me manufacture firearms. I'm okay to do what I did, but I'm only okay to do it for me and me alone. I cannot do this and then turn around and sell it to you unless I had an FFL. I serialized it. I put it in the database that this firearm was manufactured on this time frame. This is the caliber. This is the serial number. And then I can turn around and sell it to you after you pay for a background check and all that other junk. And that's fine. But if you want to go ahead and get an 80% lower, why? I ask people why as well. And everyone I've heard who says, hey, I want to get 80% lower, but then I have to register it, right? And nothing against it if that's what they want to do, but a lot of people get 80% lowers for the very purpose that you do not have to register it. California has passed some laws recently that states you have to register them 80% or not. And you have to go get it serialized and then put it in the database. So some people said, hey, I'm done with 80s at this point. Why even buy them? if you're going to do that. My original thing was a pistol. You can create a pistol lower, but you can't create a rifle lower, or I'm sorry, you can create a life rifle lower, but you can't make it a pistol lower after it's already been registered as a rifle in the state of California when I first started. That is, that is fact. It may not be anymore. The Supreme Court is knocking down stupid states, laws left and right. Thank God for that. But when I first started my pistol build, my very first AR ever was a pistol. I could not do it in California unless I got an 80% lower. Now I live in Virginia and I can go right down the street where I shoot and buy a lower, walk out with it right now, 85 to 90 bucks. Taxes included, record of sale included, price of the lower included, and then just go for it. Just do whatever it is I need to do. And I'm fine doing that. I personally don't mind spending 60 bucks on a lower receiver and then just taking the time to machine it myself. I enjoy it. I'm an artist. I like to draw. So the artistry of it is, is different for me. I like putting it together because I not only want the lower to be done together, I want to make sure this fits with the upper I want before I start drilling it out, before I do all of that. And one of my biggest issues is I'm going to still take out the lower. Uh, sandblast it, Cerakote it, or spray paint it, whichever I want to do. And I like to customize my firearms to make sure they're mine. And like I said, going back to the artist standpoint, it's just a part of who I am. I like to put that custom touch on it, that, that little PhD-ism onto the end of it. So therefore, I do my own lowers, all of them. Now, I'm not against people buying uh, stripped lowers whatsoever, but when they come to me asking me, hey, can you do it for me? I'm like, why? First of all, why? The answer is absolutely nope. But why? Why me? Why don't you just go to Daniel Defense, DPMS, BCM, blank, blank, whoever makes these lowers and then just have them do it. They already did it for you. Now, I understand some of them are pricier than the other and you're literally paying for the same part. I found these low. I bought these for 60 bucks a piece and they are black anodized already. I found some raw ones yesterday that cost $85 a piece and you had to buy them in three packs to get the $85 a piece. Or maybe it was for one, it was 85 and three of them, I might have saved 10 or 15 bucks each or something, or overall, 10 or $15 overall than buying them individually. So I bought these for $20 cheaper singles than I found at another website. So you can constantly play the game of I'm saving money and that's why I do this, but Know why you're getting that 80% lower, know your laws, read it, read the NFA, uh, everything. Read the firearms laws, read the firearms laws in not only your country, your state, your city, your county, whatever it may be, because they may be different. What you can do here, you can't do across the street. And a lot of people need to understand that. Um, as a matter of fact, where I started to see them, I never had an issue buying 80% lowers, even in California, shipped straight to my door. And you can't even do that anymore. The places I bought them before, they won't even ship to California anymore, or at least that county. And it's because of the way certain laws are starting to get passed and written. And they just said, we don't even want to deal with the headache of, of dealing with people who live over there. And that sucks. So therefore, stock up. If you want to, I get it. I'm not saying don't buy it, but know why you're buying it. I have plans for these. I actually have a plan for this lower. I actually have a plan for this lower. And the plan, you have to stay tuned to watch. 
So if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and you will see these lowers again. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about it right now. I'm thinking about putting that uh, teal blue, the PDQ, that pretty damn quick ambidextrous bolt catch. I'm planning on putting that in here right now. And then from there, go ahead and actually sandblasting this and seracoding this and actually doing um, another video. So there's a Maxim Defense video coming up. My Maxim Defense video uh, versus PDW brace, so SB Tactical PDW brace and the Maxim Defense brace. That video has started to get some traction again, and people are commenting on it, you know, way later telling me, oh, you meant to say this and you should have beeped and you should have bopped and all this other junk. And that's fine. Thanks for watching the video. But I will say this I'm way past that. Way past that at this point. Um, other people have commented and said, you should do this. You should do that. One person even told me I should delete a video I posted about my job. Funny thing is, this dude, subscribed or not, I could care less, said he didn't like the job, it was a joke, all this other junk, and then has the nerve on his uh, profile pic, the little avatar, to still have the damn helicopter on it. So it kind of made no sense to me at all. Um, my job isn't the greatest, but still my job, I'm going to represent to the fullest. Either way, so I wanted to talk about these two things right here because like I said, a lot of people will ask me to do their lowers for them and the answer is always going to be nope. And the reason for that is I'm not going to jail because you don't know how to use a jig, you don't know where to buy a jig, and you are too afraid in the first place. Me making this video, I understand there are probably people who look out for me and say, I wonder how many 80% lowers this guy bought. I buy a quite a bit of them, but I buy them in bulk and I sometimes give the 80% lowers away because they're a bulk order. I keep the ones I want, I get rid of the ones I don't want, but I never drill or mill them out for anybody else. I considered it the very first time and then I realized, oh, well, oh you can't do that? Oh, well, whoops. You know what I mean? I almost got caught slipping and I almost did it. And then I was like, well, why are you asking me? And it really pissed me off. And here's the reason I'm really getting into this is because some of the people who understand the 80% lowers, they will call me and ask me if I have any spare 80% lowers. This is where it gets even more iffy, dicey to me. They know about the 80% lower. They know they have to drill it, but they don't even have the balls to buy it. Like, what? They will say, hey, do you have any spare 80s? I literally will send them a link to it. And they're like, but you don't, you don't have any? I'm like, yeah, I do. Well, can I buy one from you? Nope. Why do you think I bought it? So I could turn around and just give it to you? And it's because they don't want to be traced or tracked that they bought an 80% lower. Mm. That is the stupidest thing. They're probably still like with that thought process, I see the intelligence behind it, but I also see the extreme cowardice and that pisses me off. So for those people, I hope you uh, understand, do not ask me to buy an 80% lower. Ask me where I bought mine. I'll send you the link. You can buy your own damn lower. And if you want to know how to drill it out or mill it out, I'll show you the link to where I get the jigs. There are videos still online, maybe not this platform, where you can actually see how to do it. It's not very hard and they come with instructions. It's not very hard. So I just want to talk about real quick 80% lowers. I told people why I do it. Um, on a previous video as to why I use 80% lowers. It has nothing to do with me trying to skirt the system uh, or anything like that. The reason why I have a Subaru is not the same reason the neighbor has the same Subaru. We have totally different reasons for owning the same thing. And I have a completely different reason of owning my 80s versus whatever you may have or anybody you know may have. So once again, that's my quick video for the day. This is PH Daring, 80% lowers. What's your thoughts? Put them down in the comment section below and I'm out. Peace.